Uh, before I get into the next stage of uh, showing how money is created by the, both the private sector and the government, I've also separated out the various definitions that I've got here. Um, I did have government equity, for example, connected down here. And what I've done instead is take a copy of government equity, paste it up here. So I've got the definitions separate from where I do the graphs. And just to save space while I do the remainder, which is going to make these tables grow quite a bit, I'm just going to rubber band around all these definitions here and release. And then when I right click inside that region, uh, you will see an option being to group. So I group that. And that just means I can make things a lot smaller and save space. And I'll just name this definition. Oh, pardon me. There you go, sneezing on YouTube. Okay, so definitions. That now provides a bit more space to make these tables grow. So I'll just actually do a bit more moving around here just to make some space. And grab these lot as well and move them. Hang on a second, let's go this way. Just to make spaces. Ah, hang on. That's right, third time lucky. Right. So now what I want to do is bring in the simplest possible way the government could make sure that the account it has at the central bank doesn't go negative, and that's to sell bonds to the central bank. Now, this is banned by most governments, but there's absolutely nothing to technically to stop it happening. So the fact the government has to sell the bonds to the banks is a requirement of the legal system. It's not a requirement of the laws of accounting. But let's just quickly illustrate that. I'm going to make it possible now that the government, a treasury creates an asset it calls bonds, and then sell those bonds to the central bank. So we're going to have now another option another liability here, which we haven't yet got so far. And I'll call this bonds subscript CB to indicate they're bonds owned by the central bank. And what I'll have here is uh, treasury sells bonds to CB. And what that would mean is that the uh, it has an increased liability over here. So this is sales by, of bonds by the treasury to the central bank, and so again, using the superscripting and subscripting capabilities of Minsky to make this easier to see. So I click outside the box and you'll then see subscript T to indicate the treasury is doing the selling, CB to indicate that the bonds are being sold to the uh, uh, to the central bank. And now because it's increased the liabilities of the banking sector, of the treasury, it's also increased the asset because this turns up as a sale that improves its um, uh, the amount of money in its account at the central bank. So I'll just type bond, subscript T, superscript CB again here. And then to show what that does with the central bank table, we now bring up the central bank's godly table. To grab this and make it a bit larger. And I can also want to show the, uh, the treasuries table up here as well. So we've now got the sale going on. And of course, we've created another liability over here for the treasury. That is an asset for someone. So therefore, if I click in the down uh, box here, I'll then show that turning up as an asset of the central bank. And now I need to complete this by showing that that's where the actual bonds turn up. So I now type bond subscript T superscript CB. And that table is now complete. So I've now got a reasonable model of the whole uh, system uh, with the pra practical but not legal possibility uh, of, the gov of the Treasury selling the bonds directly to the uh, central bank. So I now need to say, what are those bond sales going to be equal to? And what I'll have them being equal to is equal to the creation of fiat money by the government uh, by, her, by, by spending more than it takes back in taxation. So I now want to bring up the variable window again, the browser window, and bring those elements over. And let's put this over here so I can easily go back to that particular window. So I want now the sales of bonds by the Treasury to the central bank here. And notice that's reverse direction here. So I'm just going to go and, ah, pardon me, that's, that's an interesting bug because uh, I wanted to drag this up, but for some reason, the mouse was relocated up to that 
element. It's probably because the menu was occurring in my bottom screen here, which I'm now showing. So I'm going to flip that around. The bonds purchased by the uh, bond sales by the Treasury to the central bank are going to be equal to fiat, fiat money creation. And the way I can model that is simply drag from here to bonds. And that now means that what's what's going to happen is the government runs a deficit by spending more than it takes back in taxation. It will also issue bonds, uh, which are then bought by the central bank. And that means that this, this, this negative is perfectly counterbalanced by this positive, and there'll be no change in the value of the uh, a bank account the Treasury has at the central bank. So let's just see that. I'm just going to go and do a simulation now. Hit the simulation. Uh, notice that I have the Treasury account being down here shown at 60. Nothing happening so far. But if we now have the government spending more than it gets back in taxation, so creating some fiat money, uh, you'll see that the uh, the deposit accounts are, are rising because that's what's being created by the fiat money. So the, the private sector's equity is rising because the amount of money in its account is rising. The central bank's uh, accounts, the Treasury is still at 60 because exactly what's being spent uh, in terms of spending more than taxation is the flow of fiat. That's exactly matched by bond sales to the central bank. And now we have the central bank having assets as well as having liabilities. So I can do a bit of reorganizing here. This is closer to the real world. Uh, but of course, I'm still showing an illegal operation. Let's just stop that for a moment. And what I'll do is go back and, and set the whole thing so everything starts from zero, except initial loans by the by the uh, banking sector. I'm doing this because I want to indicate that the system can actually lift itself by its own bootstraps, uh, in in the manner of speaking. Uh, so we can start with, uh, let's see, just. Uh, only only um, private money creation existing is that the government suddenly turns up at some point. Uh, so I've got, I know, a bit, uh, let's see, make this minus 60. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, okay, that's correct. And this one over here should come out to, this is going to pause this line, that's going to be minus 10. Okay, so what I'm starting from now is a situation in red. Let's just actually reset this. Hang on, that should have gone back to, to, to minus 10. Okay, so I have a effectively go modeling a pure credit economy here. And in some ways, this is modeling the 19th century, because if you go back and take a look at the uh, uh, level of government debt, particularly in America during the 19th, 19th century, they got obsessed with driving the government debt down to zero. They had a few financial crises as a result of that. But fundamentally, the government was only about 5% of GDP. Most of the, uh, the economy was private sector only. And uh, we didn't have equilibrium. We had a booms and slumps galore in that period. Uh, but I want to show what happens if the government, uh, do we, can we bring a government into, the, into this system? Can it start from having absolutely no um, reserves in the system? Uh, the Treasury account, I've got that at 60 uh, so we're implying there's money inside there. I might actually even take that down to zero. We have some work to do in terms of making it possible to change all the all the um, initial conditions at one spot. Now, having done all that, I'm now starting from zero everywhere, except in terms of uh, the private sector having created loans of 100, deposits of, of 90, therefore it's got a bank equity of 10. So we're starting like with a pure credit economy, and I'm going to bring government inside there. Initially, I'll run it without any government spending inside there. Can the government spend in that situation? Yes, it can. We have Treasury equity going negative, as you can see. I'll just pause this for a moment. Negative equity for the government creating matching positive equity uh, for the um, non-government sector, so the private got 51 minus 51.8 for the treasury. That's giving us 41.8 equity for the non-bank sector, 10 equity for the banking sector. The central bank is uh, coming out with 
zero equity overall. It's got reserves of 51.8, which have been created by the Fed, and bonds of 50, 51.8, which are created by the uh, Treasury selling bonds to the central bank rather than to the banks. So what we have is a growth of, of reserves, a growth of, of bonds, the Treasury, the flow of money through the Treasury um, being able to, 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 to remain because as, as the Fed, as the bonds are sold, the Fed is created, uh, it's done simultaneously. Of course, in the real world, there are time differences here. Uh, the government office issues more bonds than it needs because it estimates future spending. It might overestimate that and create so create more bonds than it needs to cover its fiat. So there'll be variations in the treasury account. But in a mathematical sense, the whole thing can just pull itself up from the bootstraps. Uh, now, of course, this is illegal. What I'm showing here is a bit like smoking marijuana in London. It's not allowed. Uh, but the the the, uh, but the government can can feasibly finance itself by running a deficit, creating fiat money in the process, and then selling the bonds to the central bank so that its account uh, at the central bank doesn't go negative. Uh, and the system works quite smoothly. But we force it to go through the rigmarole of selling bonds to the private banks instead. And I'll show that in the next video.